A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord saw that the wickedness of humanity was great on the earth, and that every inclination of the thoughts of their hearts was only evil continually. And the Lord was sorry that he had made human beings on the earth, and it grieved him to his heart. So the Lord said, I will blot out from the earth the human beings I have created, people together with animals, and creeping things and birds of the air, for I am sorry that I have made them. But Noah found favor in the sight of the Lord. The Lord said to Noah, Go into the ark, you and all your household, for I have seen that you alone are righteous before me, in this generation. Take with you seven pairs of all clean animals, the male and its mate, and a pair of the animals that are not clean, the male and its mate, and seven pairs of the birds of the air also, male and female, to keep their kind alive on the face of all the earth. For in seven days, I will send rain on the earth for forty days and forty nights, and every living thing that I have made I will blot out from the face of the ground. And Noah did all that the Lord had commanded him. And after seven days the waters of the flood came on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord will bless his people with peace. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The voice of the Lord is over the waters, the Lord over mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The God of glory thunders, and in his temple they all say glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forever. The Lord will bless his people with peace. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. After feeding the crowd, Jesus sent them away and got into the boat with the disciples to return to the other side of the lake. Now the disciples had forgotten to bring any bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And Jesus cautioned them, saying, Watch out. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. They said to one another, It is because we have no bread. And becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, Why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears and fail to hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? They said to him, 12. And the seven for the 4,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? And they said to him, seven. Then Jesus said to them, do you not yet understand? 
the gospel of the Lord. Well, today is the last day of ordinary time prior to entering into the season of Lent. And under the old liturgical calendar prior to the Second Vatican Council, at least the last week, I'm not intimately familiar with that calendar, but at least the last week prior to entering into Easter was a special season, and it was kind of a half of a penitential season. So the readings and the texts and the themes of the Mass focused on some of the same themes and texts that would come forward in Easter, and that's not the way it's done precisely today, but today's gospel in a certain sense accomplishes that on its own. Yesterday, you will recall, and Jesus reminds us in the gospel, we heard the story of the feeding of the 4,000. Prior to that, we had several stories of healing, and Jesus alludes back to yet another feeding of many people, the 5,000 people. So we have seen all of Jesus' great works, or many of Jesus' great works, and his authority, and his power, and yet he asked the disciples, his own friends and followers, do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? And that last phrase is of ancient biblical origin in the Psalms, the hardness of heart of the human person and it could serve well as a theme for the season of Lent. We ask the Lord by his grace and by the power of what Christ has done for us to soften our hearts, to give us, as Ezekiel says, a heart made not of stone but of flesh, and yet our hearts are hardened. We seem unable to fully grasp and fully understand and fully appreciate who Christ is and what he has done for us. This is true of the disciples in Jesus' day and it is still true of us. It's intriguing in the story of the gospel as Mark presents it to us, this particular journey that they take to the other side of the lake. The narrator, Mark, begins by telling us the disciples had forgotten to bring any bread. And then he goes on to say they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And then, why are you talking about having no bread, he says, Do you still not perceive or understand? So they brought no bread, they have no bread, they have one loaf. And that one loaf, of course, is Christ. One bread, as we now say, one bread, one body. Christ. Food for the world. They have him with them, and yet they do not know. They're focused on the everyday, they're focused on the ordinary, they're focused on the things that are within their control or not. And they assume that Jesus is focused on those same things. He's talking to them, warning them of the yeast of the Pharisees and the Herod. They say, because it's because we have no bread. Jesus sees further, Jesus sees deeper, Jesus knows so much more. And it is his desire, it is his passion that we would see further, that we would see deeper, that we would know much more, that we would know, as he says elsewhere in the Gospels, that we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the Father's mouth. We live by, in, and through him, through Jesus Christ. And yet, our hearts are hardened. We are preoccupied by the cares and the worries of our daily life. Our attention, our thoughts, our questions are focused on these matters. And so from one day to the next, We are not able, we do not rightly give thanks and praise to our God. We do not attempt to feed ourselves with his word and with his very self, with all that he desires to share with us. We, like the disciples, have hardened hearts. God's word is proclaimed to us and we do not hear. He appears before us in many guises, under the appearance of the poor and the outcast, here at the Eucharist and under the appearance of the sacrament, appearance of bread and wine, he comes before us and we do not see. Do you not remember, the Lord says, what I have done for you? He called us out of darkness into light in our baptism. He made us members of himself, members of his body. And yet, 
We do not respond as fully as the Lord desires and hopes. We do not respond, if we are honest, as fully as we desire and hope. But he continues to be with us. He continues to call us. He continues to hope for us. He continues to share with us his life, his strength, his power, his grace, so that we might move forward one step at a time, sometimes more slowly than we would like, often more painfully than we like, we would like, but that we might continue to move forward closer to him, closer to that relationship that we desire, closer to that state of having a heart that is fully open to him and to his love. And so then also as we are open to him and we allow him to enter into our life and into our heart, then truly also to be open to others. Love God, love your neighbor. Love God, love others. So as we prepare now, we're on the very cusp of entering into that great season of Lent. As we prepare, we ask for the grace through this sacrament, through our time of prayer, through God's presence in our lives, we ask for the grace not to have a hardened heart, but to be open to all that the Lord desires to do in us because he desires to do great things in each and every one of us. And this season of Lent is a beautiful opportunity for us through the practice of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving to recognize his presence, to open ourselves to his power, and to take that extra step, that further step on the road to becoming the person we were created and are called to our baptism to be and to become.